Welcome to the Just Josh Podcast. Who the fuck is this guy? Hey, who the fuck are you? Huh? Who the fuck are you? This whole thing is a little weird. Ah, never yet fear, laddie (laughs) box. Take two. (laughs) Zoom, we have Just Josh, and then we have Robbie Josh. (laughs) (laughs) And then we have... Uh, we have Pat Murtaugh and Pilot Travel Center. Robbie, you look handsome. Thank you. I f- I'm just. I feel wow. You got the hair cropped right. Dude, All right. And like the beard, finally, it's like <laughs> it's starting to fill in. Finally. Well, it's- you know? <laughs> I'm I've been just, I've been letting it grow long. You know. Well, this one a different direction. <laughs> yeah. Pat, you have great yeah. hair, man. Pat, you have really you. great yeah. hair. Let's and have our own I, conversation. I, I need to get a haircut, like tomorrow no it looks good thank you it look, I, mean, I, appreciate, I appreciate that i've definitely seen your hair longer i was so stubborn for like seven years about getting my hair cut and then i finally cut it short and i was like wow this looks a lot better oh yeah 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 for sure we have a panel of handsome gentlemen for sure why don't we introduce them we have pat Murtaugh, merch man extraordinaire yeah say hello, hello. say hello ah. pat we also got mr alex Wright. Back Tour again. Manager extraordinaire. Tour manager extraordinaire. By the time everyone sees this, Alex's will be out. I'm I'm working on the edit right now. So it'll be the next one, maybe tomorrow. Maybe I'll get it done by tomorrow. I had the I had the great pleasure of learning pretty much everything about touring from Alex. The good, the bad, the ugly. God, that's <laughs> what? You learn from me. That's why I'm amazed you're good at your job. Mm. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> the only lesson that I still have yet to learn properly is no beers in bed. <laughs> Beer, beers in the shower, though. Yeah, okay. but if you bring pancakes to bed, it's all right. That was that a great was... story. <laughs> I don't even remember what prompted me having pancakes in bed, but I you, just remember. You I... were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you spilled. I told this on Josh's, uh, on me and Josh's solo interview, but you spilled a beer in bed and I got mad and you were just like, shh, 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 and just fed me a pancake. And I was like, okay. Okay, I I remember this because you yelled at me. I fell asleep with a drink in bed and I spilled (laughs) it on you while you were sleeping. And I remember you waking up and yelling at me like, God damn it, no beers in bed. And I remember just half asleep and wildly drunk just saying, it's not a beer, it's a White Claw. And you're like, that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> There's zero sugar. That's a good rule to have, no beer in bed. But you successfully like calmed the situation by just putting a pancake gently on my lips. I'm very good at de-escalating. <laughs> I wish I knew that's all it took was just a pancake to the face. I would have uh, tried, yeah, tried but- that. <laughs> There's there's a there's a touch you gotta have. I know. I would just like slap him with it, and he'd get madder. He'd be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Was it an IHOP pancake? Uh, absolutely. I actually got IHOP delivered to my apartment yesterday afternoon. <laughs> uh, Alex, tell everyone what you're eating. I'm eating a sushi burrito. Nice. And I'm drinking a hard kombucha. Mm. Sushi burritos definitely yeah. became my favorite uh, food, but we don't have too many around here. I have to drive to, like, Towings Mills. Uh, I know a spot in, like, Cockeysville, but, I mean, none of them are, like, stellar. You know? Oh, and there's one in Owings Mills. but I just said that. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh in Owings Mills. You did, you did say that, didn't you? Um, but, yeah, that one's not really stellar either. There's two in Owings Mills. God, Robbie, do you listen to anything I say? No. We got Pat and Alex on the well, Yeah. Podcast. You're I'm sitting like, 10 feet from each other. You don't listen. <laughs> pretty much uh but this yeah this is pat's uh pat's podcast so welcome in how How you doing buddy i'm pretty good i'm like glad to be talking to some music friends again because i'm sick of talking to my own co-workers right now yeah (laughs) tell us how bad 2020 fucked you up man i mean it didn't fuck me up nearly as bad as a lot of people because i mean i Kind of, I still have like a desk job that I was able to go back to. I'm not completely out of work, but definitely a bit depressed that there's no like live events going on 
and it's always just a matter of like when am i gonna see my friends again like uh are you going to riot fest if you're not on tour would you go to riot uh, fest absolutely i already have tickets for it me too we're definitely hanging out when is yeah, it? I got I got the tickets on the last day that you could buy that the cheapest would one that like Thursday night show. Nice, nice. I'm stoked for that because the intrigue was just too much, and they kept poking at it, and I was like, all right, fine, I have to buy these. I could tell that they're really trying to go out since it was canceled this year. They're really trying to have a bang, and this is one of the best lineups I've seen since like 2013, and it was only the first wave. Yes, and I'm absolutely heartbroken that I will not be seeing Toots and the Maytals again. I know. I <laughs> saw that. I saw that it's they still kept his name on the flyer and stuff. Like, and I know they're not going to make a new flyer per se, but yeah, I, I just got yeah. so sad. I was like, that was. I mean, I saw Toots play like a sold out show at Thalia Hall to like two thousand people or something a couple summers ago. <laughs> And it was absolutely insane. And Turtle wound up getting me like free VIP tickets to it too. <laughs> That's awesome. That guy's the man. Yeah, but, I mean, that was that was one of the biggest like selling points for me to even get one of the tickets to Riot Fest was just to be able to watch him perform again. And I'm just I'm heartbroken that I can't see that. The Toots was one of my favorites. Um, and I remember going to the Roots Rock and Reggae Festival which was, you know, the Marley's and it was the first, and I'm pretty sure the only time, maybe they've done it since, but this was back in 2004, maybe where they had all brothers, every single brother that was in music was on the same stage together. It was the first time they ever did that. That's awesome. And then they had slightly stupid open and then toots came after them and it was just an amazing show. And this was when stupid was like a, still a three piece. There's the drummer and the Kyle and, uh, I'm blanking. Why am I blanking? It's, dude, I, I watched Stupid play as a uh, a three piece just this past weekend. Um, so they were doing Fat Records was doing the weekend oh, yeah. at Fatty's show, and Slightly Stupid was playing <laughs> up after No Effects. And I guess Fat Mike was like, absolutely no reggae allowed. So they played. <laughs> as a, so they played as a three piece punk band for like six songs. It was really really cool. Wow, that would yeah, been, that's that, awesome. Yeah, that would have been awesome to see. I can't even they imagine. sounded fantastic. Yeah, and I mean, man. then uh, Fishbone, too. Mm. And then, I mean, they have, so it's no effects, Fishbone, Slightly Stupid, all playing in Fat Mike and Fat Mike's backyard. Yeah, that's like, sick. Like, pool. It was insane. And you were there? No, I wish. <laughs> uh, my Get Dead guys were played there, too. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So I almost flew out for it, but they didn't have any, like, guest list or anything. Yeah. It was pretty locked down. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's but like, cool. I mean, it looked it looked and sounded fantastic. I saw your story; it looked pretty awesome. Yeah, I was kind of bummed I couldn't make it out there for that. So, uh, so you have the job to go back to. Uh, is it Groupon? Or are you doing Live Nation still? No, I'm at Groupon. I'm not at Live Nation anymore. That didn't end very well for me. I'm not a big fan of them anyway. I mean, yeah, I didn't know. You're probably not. <laughs> probably not missing much. No, I'm not missing much, and they just keep laying people off. Um, yeah. yeah, it it pretty much it didn't end that great <laughs> when I tried to cover one of my last shifts. So I was like calling people to try and get my stuff covered, mm -hmm. and I get a text from my boss, and she just goes, "Yeah, next time, why don't you just like let me know if you can't get a shift filled or whatever? Because you contacted someone that doesn't work here anymore." Like, well, you told me it was my responsibility, so I was trying my best there. Yeah, yeah. I've never yeah. got a call back since then. I did that most of last summer. I did. Like the Grateful Dead show out at Wrigley. I was doing the BTS, the K-pop show out at Soldier Field. Mm -hmm. um, is that Korean pop? Is that what K-pop means? Yeah, I'm so old. Was, How is that? Wild. Why do people like that so much? It's it's like Amer It's like it's almost Americanized Korean pop music. No, I know what it is, but like, why, dude? You're Korean. <laughs> Dude, I know, them, but <laughs> this, this, this is your lane. Bro. Why aren't I into it? It's my question. <laughs> it's just pop music, man. It's just main. It's their mainstream pop music. Do you think I could be a K-pop artist? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. All you need to do is a little hair gel. A I need to get a haircut. T-shirts. You're there. I'm. I've been uh, in like shorts and and hoodies and sweatpants for like months. Everyone has. The one time I dressed up was when you came back for the second time. And that was a, a, that white was a, sh a short down. sleeve white button down. <laughs> That's yeah. about as dressy as I get. So with COVID going on, uh, 
Do you guys see the picture up? Yeah. What oh, the hell? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For 20 minutes. Yeah, that shit's awful, man. $199 for this thing. Look at that guy. Look at that stare. He, he got the model stare even behind the, the like, glass or it, plastic it, or whatever. It reminds me of the opening scene from the original Total Recall. <laughs> Where Arnold Schwarzenegger's <laughs> mask breaks and his eyes just start popping out. Yeah, but uh, that was a great movie, by the way. I remember getting yeah. freaked out when yeah, I was one, little. One of my favorites. But I just, I just love how the the photo, like, they're acting like they don't even have it on. You know, like them sitting on the bench, like, it's so, it's there so are, surreal. He's like, like trying to cross the street. <laughs> Josh, I think you need to invest in at least one of these. And then just make every guest from now on that comes in studio, you have to make them wear it. And be super serious about it, too. Like, be, be worried about your own safety and, like, you have to wear this while you're in my house <laughs> kind of thing. Like, I'll meet them at the door, at the front door, and be like, here. You have to put this on before coming inside. And just see, how, see how long they wear it. And, like, yeah. see how long they'll, like, try and talk into the mic with it. You can have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> Did you hear the pod? Did you hear the? Did you? You probably don't listen to my podcast, but Pat, did you see the episode with me? The first one, me and Robbie, or maybe it was the second one. I guess I just put it out. Yeah, friend check. Who listened to my podcast? <laughs> I listened to a little bit of your podcast, and I've been meaning to ask you how did that uh, pepper auction thing go for you guys? Oh, oh, it went really well. Um, Good. Yeah, 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 it went really well. Um, it was generous and nice. I was very fortunate that the pepper guys let it happen, and um, yeah, it was a big help for sure. Yeah, because yeah, every single really time well. that I saw, they were like, all right, the auction ends in like 24 hours. And then it was mm -hmm. like, we added another 10 items. It's yeah, like, it, well, it was, it, never yeah, it, was it was great. Um, I, like Sasha really took the, the helm on it. And um, he actually hired like a professional auctioneer that her job was to run this entire and do it. <laughs> can I get 500 and 500? That's exactly. And enough. if you watch, I think you can still watch the stream if you're friends with the Pepper Road Crew page on Facebook. Yeah, she did it exactly like that on the live stream or whatever, and it was it was awesome. I watched along, and um, yeah, we all had like little videos for it. Um, yeah, so it was like you know before this, let's hear from the crew and whatever. It was done really well. Um, she did a really good job with it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was it was great. It was very. I'm too scared to use Cash App. I feel like it's I don't Venmo. Know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's uh, check out my OnlyFans and then Cash App me. Like that's what it reminds me of. I had to send money to my brother and he was requesting money on cash app. So she was like downloading it. And she's like, this just seems like a scam through and through. Ow. It's just a vehicle for money. A vehicle for money. Yeah. Yeah. Robbie with the hard questions. I mean, that's what uh, you trust your bank. Don't you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say absolutely not. Well, hey, good point. But I mean, it's like they, they provide a service. You know what I mean? I think I've watched Alex fight on the phone with the bank at least once a tour. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It well, I mean, yeah, banks always fuck up. For me, though, like, if I'm out of town, they'll randomly strike my car like, hey, what are you doing all the way out here? It's like, I don't know, just living my life. <laughs> I'm just doing my thing. But uh, Let me live my life. I have a credit. How did you Hasn't get from yet. one coast to the other in three days? <laughs> exactly. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Alex, do you remember the show that we did with Real Big Fish in Flint, Michigan at that biker bar? Yep. Ooh, okay, so that afternoon I was just randomly going through my like debit card transactions and I saw one thing from like a couple days prior and I was like, that doesn't look right. So I called Chase and I'm like, what's going on with this transaction? Where was this? Like, this was not me. And sure enough, they're like, okay, yeah, like we'll take a quick look into it. And they're like, um, so yeah, that's a that's a charge from a dispensary in Fort Collins. I'm like, oh yeah, that was me. There's <laughs> <laughs> some like completely different name on the on like the statement. I'm like, uh, yeah, what is this? They have like, to we recommend you use cash at those establishments. Yeah, they apparently have to do that at dispensaries. Some do. Some uh, what sucks is that they will you'll get charged twice. One from your bank and then one from the dispensary from the ATM. So it's like a double try. I remember looking at my statement and I had like $8 in charges. I'm like, what the fuck is this from? And then I traced it back to me going to the dispensary. But the other one I go to is only cash. I've been using my unemployment debit card at the dispensary. That's awesome too. Did yours have flowers on it? Mine has flowers on it. 
No, mine's just like a straight red card, and it looks, it's like, it doesn't have a chip or anything. It looks like the fakest debit card, but I'm going to keep swiping it until it yeah. doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Pat, how much gin has been purchased with that debit card? <laughs> More than I'd like to admit. <laughs> You okay, do. continue with the interview. That was my only question. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pat, uh, Pat, tell us about um your gin addiction. <laughs> what, addiction what? <laughs> seems a bit much. <laughs> whoa, I mean, this whoa, podcast whoa. is only an hour. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's only there's only so much time in the day. Um, yeah, I I like gin. We'll leave it at that. But yeah, Pat, you got into uh, your you are the number one merch. You work for Alex, and you've done Pack Dub, Ballyhoo. Yeah. Uh, talk about that and how you got into it. Um, I got into it by pestering Tristan to no end until he just handed it to me. Um, the <laughs> first show in live music that I ever worked was actually with Robbie and Alex, but they don't remember it because I was a house crew guy. And they came through our venue and it was 2015. It was on another Real Big Fish tour. Um, so I got to work with Alex, Robbie, uh, David Irish, Tom Ames for my yeah. first ever show. And it, cause I know, I mean like everything goes off perfectly when Tom's in charge of a show. And I think Dave has gone on to work with the interrupters. Now he's doing front of house for the interrupters. He's their uh, tour. Oh, he's their tour manager too. Good for him. Um, but yeah, that's when I was like, Oh, this was a lot of fun and I can see about making this work. Um, so I went and saw you guys on the Three Amigos tour, opening for Pepper. Three. I saw you guys in Madison, Wisconsin, I think. That's my favorite Pepper shirt. The Three yeah, Amigos tour. Noon saloon. And I met Tristan that night and pretty much punished the shit out of him, as I now know. I bet. Um, exchanged contact information. We stayed in contact for the next like couple of years until... He was like, hey, I can't do this anymore. Do you want to take over? And I was like, thank God. I graduate in like three weeks and I don't have a job. So sure. Nice. Yeah. He so made I got, a I got flown out to Dallas, Texas. First show was at um, Gas Monkey. And I love that venue. He flew out the next day and that was kind of it. At the end of that first tour, I think it was only like seven or eight shows that I did. Um we pull up to Donald's house. I'm about to go to the airport. I'm like, yeah, that was fun. And Scott's, Scott's sitting there saying, okay, yeah, we'll call you in a month when we go back out again. I'm like, oh, really? Like, you're going to keep calling me back? We're like, do we have a reason not to? Okay. So I just get stuck with them for the next, like, three years. Do, do people still ask you at the merch table, are you Tristan or where's Tristan? I still get a ton of where's Tristan. Or not even where's Tristan, but what the hell, you're not Tristan? I was about to say, they come up and they're like, you're not Tristan. <laughs> Great. People just meet you with immediate disappointment on their uh, Immediate. <laughs> I don't know why neither of you have fucked with people and been like, I am Tristan. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? I don't I don't look enough like Tristan. I was going to say, I look nothing. I'm like the complete opposite of Tristan. I'm short and Asian. Like Them feel crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I can do that in so many other avenues. You can, and I'm impressed by that. The trick to being <laughs> the trick to being a good merch guy is gaslighting, basically. In my in my role, everybody sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> I'm stick to strangers. Yeah, but you didn't want to talk you to any of the strangers. Age or where's the band or. Can I have this piece of equipment that obviously I would never give somebody because it's fucking equipment? <laughs> right. Like, not just guitar picks. People have asked for guitars. People have been like, yo, let me get those rechargeable batteries. Literally. <laughs> Off my fucking tech. Yo, let me get those batteries. No. How did you get back here? Who are you? <laughs> I like the, the, can I buy that crew shirt from you? Like, I get no, that a man. lot. This is my shirt. Like, this is, I need this. I actually fucked up in Pensacola. I had a woman that was you literally not. to have sex with me for my t-shirt. And I was just like, please go away. I'm packing up. And Zach, our other intermittent sound guy and good friend was just like, dude, you fucked up. I would have just packed this up. <laughs> 
Was that the was that the three bedroom hotel room the time of Pensacola? Maybe. Or the three bed in one room? Maybe. Vinyl room or whatever. Yeah. Vinyl. Yeah. Hall. Yes, that- yeah. It's like the stars have aligned. The door is open. You just have to walk through it. Yeah. I would have packed it up, man. There's no problem. Uh, you walk through that door. Uh, <laughs> actually, Robbie, you did that to me one time at a festival in Jacksonville. Yeah. That's the that's the homie move. You know? Girl just came up and you were just like, dude, Girl. me and the crew got this. Yeah, go. go. I got you. Go. <laughs> so the one time that uh, – I'm gonna ask him before uh, before I put this out to see if uh, it's an okay story to tell. But <laughs> Alex, do you remember that one time that we were uh, we were in the hotel room and Zach was with us, and um, he had a female friend over, and I was so tired, I just wanted to sleep, and I half was awake and I saw you leave, and I was I was like I figured you were just going to the bathroom, but then you left, and then so I'm still sleeping there, and then I realized why you left. And uh, he was uh, doing his thing, and I was so tired. I was like, where do I go? Like, where am I going to go? So I just laid there and pretended to sleep <laughs> while uh, they were they were doing their thing. And then it was funny because I heard their whole conversation. The whole, like, they were talking, and I'm like, this is so awkward. And she got <laughs> so pissed. She just, like, whatever, and, like, storms out. And I was just like, thank God that was over. And then you and Donald came in with, like, all this food. Do you remember that? It was, like, a ton of food. And then I woke up, and we were all, like, sitting there talking, and then we all went to bed. I don't know. It was such a Dude. weird night. No, I have no recollection you of that. You don't remember that at all? <laughs> Ugh, that's so funny. I, I, Dude, I, 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 I went in the room with Donald and a bunch of food later. I was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It might have been one of those nights, man. 100% believe that story because Zach has – not one issue doing that if anyone else is in the room. Oh, no, I wouldn't. You know, if I had a chick back there, well, one, I wouldn't bring a chick back out of respect. I'd try and do it somewhere else if possible. Well, but then two, if it did, I wouldn't care, you know, as long as they didn't care. <laughs> I'd make it quick. My, my favorite conversation <laughs> of Zach talking to a girl on the phone in the crew room was when he just nonchalantly asked, <laughs> Do you do you like spooky stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like spooky stuff too. That's awesome. <laughs> like I have no idea what the context of this conversation is, but there's Boom. typically no reason to ever ask, are you into spooky stuff? Yeah. Cause like there's a Scooby Doo episode I've been trying to watch for a while now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I like spooky stuff. Um he I'm was super excited for fall. He was talking to his quintessential like emo girlfriend that liked horror movies or like <laughs> I'm sure I could, we made memes about it the entire <laughs> next day <laughs> we're talking awful lot about zach we should tell zach, him to zoom in zach is a great dude yeah, wait, yeah i got to hang out with him like legit when i covered for you for that last dinosaur show that was the first yeah. time i like really like got to hang out with him all day or whatever um God. super dope yeah. i love zach we had such a good time he he definitely evened me out you know like, we got along great. He's yeah. super easy to get along with, and he does a fucking bang-up job. He's great. He's he's fantastic. He's he's amazing. He's just very, very pretty, and he fucks. I was just <laughs> thinking in my head how, like, he looked, like, when he shaved. I thought it was a female <laughs> when I scrolled through my Instagram. I was like, damn, who's that chill? Okay, oh. and I just kept going. I was like, <laughs> shit. He's gorgeous. He's a good-looking dude. Yeah, he's Gorgeous a good man. dude. He modeled my shit for me, and he looked <clears throat> he looked damn good in it too. Josh shit in his hands, and he was like, <laughs> "Model it." You would take that literally and turn it into a funny. Yeah, come on, I'm hanging out with them. Was it was it you, Alex, or was it Zach that found the uh, the bloody handprint in our Dallas hotel room? Oh god! Oh, oh my god! That's awful. I remember it like, that. It was like the door leading to the next room, and I'm pretty sure it was when you guys were going to get tattoos at, uh... oh, man. Yeah, Our yeah. Encounters? Yeah, we stayed. Oh, it was at that, like, it was like a residence inn, and we were like, dope. And then we got there, and we are like, not dope. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> dope, not dope. The place was scary. No water pressure. Yeah, it was. it was bad. But we went to our normal artistic encounter. Tattoo shop in Deep Ellum, David Nash. Shout out. 
But <laughs> I've been there three or four times with you guys. And I remember the last time we went to Four Corners. That was dope. That was a, that was a good day. That was relaxing. I think you got a tattoo when we went like, to Four Corners. Work. Your buckles. Dude, you're getting up there. Because I remember uh, um, before <laughs> it was like maybe one arm or just a bunch of tattoos or something like that. You're getting up there. I've had my tattoos for so long that I haven't gotten any in so long. I only like, have I've had four. the sleeve since I was like 20. I don't 20 think I want any more. I think I'm 23. Good. I feel like I need to get a. I feel like I need to get like a real tattoo. Like I've got two of the most regrettable tattoos possible. Henna. I know about your butt one, but the the van and trailer one's pretty cool. Well, the van and trailer one. Yeah, don't you have one with them? We all got just matching tattoos. The skull. At like Three a.m. in a stranger's tattoo parlor after a show. Skull, <laughs> skull or die, right? Or a uh, van or van or skull, right? No. No, that. Something That's else. something different, I guess. Uh, Pat didn't get that one. Yeah. No, you've got that. You guys one, are cute with matching got, tattoos. Got little man. That's cool, dude. Start small. My dad took me when I was like 15 to get my own because my sister was like, "You might as well go with him because he's gonna go anyway." Because I had gotten one because I I got like a fake ID. That's a good sister. And I went, and she, my sister was like, you, "Yeah." No, she she looked out for me. She was like, well, she wasn't really looking out for – well, I guess she was. She was making sure I didn't get – she told my dad, like, basically, you might as well go with him to, one, make sure he doesn't get something stupid, and then, two, to make sure he's going to, like, a, a healthy place because he's going to do it anyway. Yeah. And my dad was like, okay. So he took me to get it. I was, like, a sophomore in high school, maybe even maybe even freshman. I can't remember. But, yeah, he took me, and I actually have another – I'm finished up my turtle, if you guys have seen my turtle. So I'm finally getting that finished with, like, an Aztec pyramid on the bottom and like some other shit and then getting the sunset finished. Yeah. So I'm stoked for that. It's going to be expensive, but Casey, Casey Anderson, Alex, you might know him cause uh, Trey's the one that turned me on to him. And now he's up in PA with his I, own spot. I've heard the name. He yeah. did Trey's sleeves. Oh, he did Trey's like a uh, Barracuda thing. Yeah. The underwater, I think. I think it's yeah, like a shark and stuff too. That's yeah. kind of tight. I just <clears throat> never nailed down like an idea of what I want. I'm like lucky I, that all my tattoos, even if they didn't turn out how I first imagined it or wanted it, they actually either turned out better or I, I, I like them all. Like people give compliments all the time. I, I think both of mine were pretty much like forced upon me. <laughs> <laughs> do, do it or you're not our friend. Kind of. And I mean, that's just how easy it is to persuade me. to. You want to get paid this week? You get this tattoo. <laughs> Well, when I got the van tattoo, I wasn't even getting paid on that tour. That was a seven-week tour I did for free. Wow. That's stupid. No, I'm just kidding. That's not... You made tips, though. I made tips. tips. Are great. But he didn't offer me on purpose. It just was a surprise. What? Uh, didn't you, you thought you were going to get paid. And no, then there were... I, I knew on this tour, that, or on like that tour, I, it was told to me up front, like, hey, man, we can't pay you. But if you want to still come along, like you can take like a small merch percentage and like take tips. And I was like, all right, cool. And then I flew out there and they're like, yeah, so have you ever tour managed before too? <laughs> You're like, all right, I'll out. And my flight home. <laughs> yeah. I had, to, I had to switch flights so that I could do that Punk and Drublet Festival with them. It was a blast. Yeah, dude. Do you have any uh, crazy? Not crazy. That's a st- I hate that question. When they're like, you have any crazy merch stories? But do you have any like ones that stick out to you? Where you're just like, what the fuck, man? Definitely, like, I can- one that sticks out is when we got detained at the U.S. Canadian border, trying to get back into the states. Um, we essentially like rolled up to the checkpoint, and we're like, all right, so cash like how much cash do you have on you is anyone traveling with more than like fifteen thousand dollars and like collectively i think we have a thousand dollars between seven of us so like no that's not an issue uh what's in the trailer it's band equipment we get through all of that and they're like oh so what's the band name everyone takes a deep breath and like get dead they're like uh yeah can you pull into this giant garage over here and we're gonna have to search you so we had to like we essentially like cooked the books on all of our transactions through Canada. They made us get out of the van, put all of our phones on the hood of the van, put us in this like holding cell. Our singer as he was 
oh man, a half hour prior to that, he had taken a tap of LSD that we found in the van. <laughs> He's like tripping while in this holding cell, yelling at the border patrol agents to let him out so he can pee, or he's gonna pee in the AC unit of our room. And it was just, nice. it, was, it took a total of, I think three and a half hours for them to toss the van. And they wow. found one nug <laughs> and tried to hit us with international drug trafficking. With one that little we nug. We're able to like talk our way out of. But yeah, that one's always going to uh that one's always gonna have a special place for me because it was like <laughs> a mixture of just crazy nerves where it's like, what the hell's gonna yeah. happen here? Yeah, but also knowing like, hey man, we just tossed the van ourselves like twenty miles from the border. There's nothing in here, so they can't do anything. Yeah. So I mean, we got out of it just fine, and then we went to I think Fargo, North Dakota, and stayed at a casino. And we walked into a casino, into the casino, smoking cigarettes, and immediately were kicked out because they were like, "No, no, 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 no! This isn't Vegas. We're not that kind of casino." Wow. <laughs> Wow. Damn. Yeah, borders and checkpoints are always super sketchy. It's like, you know you're not it's, doing anything wrong, but it's still like a... When getting a, into Canada, it took... I think we were through the border crossing into Canada within like 18 minutes or something. And then to get like held up for about four hours trying to get back into the States, it's like, hey man, I'm like, we're trying to go home. Like, let us in. Yeah, that's where they hold you up every time. It's no problem getting into Canada. They're like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, US, and, uh, where's your the guys we were opening for, they got jammed up going into Canada, and they had to pay, like, thousands of dollars in taxes on their merch wow. that they were bringing in. And we were lucky enough, because they went at, like, 4 a.m., so they caught, like, a shitty, <laughs> like, just pissed-off Border Patrol guy. Pissed-off Canadian. Money. We went at... Two in the afternoon, and they checked our passports and everything checked out, and we got right through. But yeah, I mean, it was trying to come home that was the worst. I hate that, like the difference is like the person you catch. You catch someone in a shitty mood, and it just ruins your fucking day. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's even like it even applies to like my office job right now. It's like we have parameters of like what we can and can't do, and it really ultimately comes up to like what sales rep you get so like some people are gonna be super shitty and just say mm, no not worth my time not gonna do it and then there's other people that do their job and it works out just fine yeah. i've been getting sucked into those youtube videos with people like rving and stuff or like making those vans sick i guess all i want to do is make my own it's just so expensive I just yeah. saw one where they took a bus and they took two buses <laughs> and you know how subway cars, they have like those little accordion things in, in between and you like walk through them to get mm -hmm. to the next car. So they took two buses and made it into a, like an RV thing and he has like six kids and they all travel the country and, and live in it. And they probably steal from every Walmart. Oh yeah. Most it looked like a piece of RV? shit inside. The ex most expensive RV in the world is $3 million. Jesus. I feel like I, I could that. design a more expensive RV. <laughs> like really dope it out, you know. You can get um uh like decent smaller sized RVs kind of like that motorhome stripes one for like in between 50 to 100. And if yeah, you, but get, you can get that one off of wish.com for $29. <laughs> oh shit, wish. <laughs> See, I'm not even thinking about, like, I keep it, I'm typing in expensive RVs and stuff, but I'm not even talking about, like, souped up, you know, crazy vans. Like, these people are just taking regular vans, yeah, but making them nice, like, nice sprint. enough to live in. Yeah, like a sprinter, and then they build it out. Do you know how much uh, the Mercedes was, Alex? Like, ballpark? Um, Probably. Where if you bought one brand new? Look it up. Mercedes. Well, here, under 40, I think. Really? Yeah. It's yeah, actually just, pretty affordable. Just for a van, yeah. Yeah. Well, here's a two hundred thousand dollar custom one. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Get crazy. But those are the ones that are. I just best to build out. I couldn't. I need something bigger than that because I can't fit everything in just a sprinter. You don't. You don't need something bigger than that, dude. I mean, where am I going to put all this shit? 
in there. Well, I mean, you shouldn't take that with you. you have to take a house and put it in a van. Yeah, like you don't need a, a 60 inch monitor or whatever, just a laptop. I can assure you, you don't need much. Because I mean, like my entire yeah. apart, my entire apartment here in Chicago is 200 square feet. Oh yeah, no, like, I'm I'm up, good with not having a ton of space. But I was joking when I'm like, where am I going to bring all this stuff? But you know, this I'm not going to live here forever, so I'd have to at least put all this stuff in storage. But like uh, I would I just want enough room for my dogs, and like I'll go backpacking. You know, I've been watching the Tim and Finn uh, videos, and they're just a regular couple, and I like how they've grown over the years. But they actually like make it kind of they do voiceovers and they explain things and, and do different things. But they, you know, they're not like professionals. You know, they're not anything crazy. And they've been doing some of these tours where they're, you know, their whole meal's like two dollars. You know, and then so they're getting to see these amazing views and do all these things in Vietnam and whatnot for like, let's say under three hundred dollars U.S. Now the plane ticket's a different story, but like the whole trip and they're living there for months. They're like some of their places were under thirty dollars. A night and if you do the month long it's actually like super cheap you know yeah man but i'm glad I had, i'm glad to have you on because uh you feel my pain as far as merch i'm always i always always part-time back up but i loved doing it but at the same time like i don't really feel like anyone else could truly understand what i y go through y'all get tips though on a night yeah but that's but we work for them people act like that's like it's not like we're sitting there having to deal with a lot of shit like yeah, I earn every single dollar that I get. You know what I it's mean? It's like the easiest and hardest job it, on the tour all at once. No, right. No, I agree. Where it's I just, not at all it's not at all technical, <laughs> but it's absolutely exhausting yeah. by the end of the night after speaking to that many people. And like you couldn't ever really fathom the amount like the stupidity behind some of the questions too. Oh, where it's like yeah. oh, I, I never got, I never underestimate how color stupid you have that in extra extra small it's like if you don't see it up here man i'm not target like i'm it's like selling asking for product. grape soda at a restaurant like, like I'm, I'm selling diet grape soda out of a plastic box like no yeah. i don't have <laughs> seven different colors for that design like what you see is what i got are you sure can you check in the back check in the back it's like man i've got the entire fucking tours inventory at my fingertips there's nothing in the back plus my job is to get rid of this. I'm not hiding it from you. Like, I'm trying to sell this. So if I don't have it, I'm sold out. <laughs> One time someone came up and asked uh, if I worked for the band. I'm like, no, I just walked up and started uh, taking some shirts. You can help yourself if you want, uh, but just don't tell them. Like, don't tell the band. I walked away. <laughs> The irations guy, Nijo, actually had that kidding. happen one time where he went to the bathroom. He was telling me he went to the bathroom and like then ran out to the trailer to go grab back stock and stuff and came back and some random dude was just like behind the table selling stuff. So, that's, I mean, that's it's weird. Like, I've never had that happen. <laughs> hurt him physically? Like, how did that end? I have no idea how that ended. I, I It couldn't have been great. <laughs> It was probably a give me all the money you made and get the fuck out of here. He probably yeah, didn't I'm, sell anything, honestly. Nothing surprises me out of these people anymore. I couldn't imagine like running to take a piss in between songs or during a song and coming back and someone's trying to tune Howie's guitar. I'd beat the shit out of them. Yeah. yeah. That's a huge fight. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I almost got the shit beat out of me by a security guard because he thought I was trying to get backstage because he just wouldn't look at the laminate. <laughs> I think it was the same. It was the same show that uh, security took that dude out back and like beat him up behind the venue for crowd surfing out in mm. New York. Mm. Yeah, that place. That place sucked. When I went to uh, Incubus and me and Alex flew out, he came to Maryland, and I went to New York and I lost. I left my wallet on the airplane. Um, I went back and I remember everyone else didn't get a hard time, uh, but I did because I didn't have my ID at the venue i'm like i work for the band like it's not like i'm just a fan that doesn't have his id he's like well we don't know i'm like what's your biggest merch pet peeve <laughs> it's hard to say you know why because i think it changes depending on what tour or what mood i am because for the most part i get it like i get it as a fan i think it's weird to me like you can be super polite to someone and then they'll still take offense to it 
you know, oh, yeah. or those like you I've heard be- people like, oh, your merch guy's a dick. And I was just like, you were the guy that was giving me such a hard time before. And I was super polite to you. He was like, well, if I buy four, or I get like twenty five dollars off, or, you know, something like that. One of those buy one, get one, you know, type of deals. And I was no. just like, no. <laughs> And I'm just like, and, and I just said, you know, uh, I'm sorry. You know, I have no control over that. The prices are set how they are. You know, the, if, if you have, I always say if they push it and they're being really pushy about it, I will say, you know, if you get one of the guys to text me and tell me it's okay, I'm more than happy to, you know, do whatever. If you're that good a friend with them or, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm not, that, that's coming out of my, like giving free shit away comes out of my yeah. pay. So right. Like, I'm if exactly. you come up to the table and your first thing is to say, oh, what's for free? It's like, end of the line, dude. Go, <laughs> go make your choice back there. I, none of it's free. This is, I just tell people it's our gas money. Like, it's trying to get us to the next show. Right. Trying to get hotels and shit. It's like, it's rude. That's why I don't go up to merch people anymore. <laughs> because I used to go up and talk their heads off, you know? And now I realize I'm like, when I'm standing there and I'm trying to sell and it's fine, like I can multitask. So someone's talking to me, no problem. But, you know, if they're drunk, you know, it's just, you know, it makes other people want to walk away Absolutely. and not get merch now. So you you do have to kind of control, troll that. And when, and I don't think, and look, I don't hold it against fans. I never t- want to talk negative about them. I just don't think they realize how drunk they are. And then you, yeah, of course you're going to get a couple people that are assholes. It happens. You know, there's shows I don't but, realize how drunk I am. <laughs> <laughs> the older I get, I don't drink as much. So, um, the only thing I had to deal with was trying to get like a jewel or something where I didn't have to leave the table and I could just take a quick sig hit without having to go outside. Pat, Pat can be like walking around perfectly straight, totally oh, yeah. coherent, not slurring his words, um, uh, drinking nonstop. And then the next day you'll be like, man, I was so drunk. I was trashed. I'm like, Dude, you were like fine. You were like, like, c- totally yeah. could have been sober. Like, you just woke up. Like, totally. That's why. Typically, what what gets me is when we get back to the hotel, especially on the Ballyhoo tours, where we get back to the hotel and I go and I lay down in bed and I tell Alex to put cartoons on for me, and then we just finish the bottle of Jameson, and that's where it starts yeah. getting blurry. And you're already laying down, so the spins are just like. Getting yeah, ready. but I also like I don't smoke during show. Like the amount of people that have come up and they're like, "Here, do you want to hit this?" I'm like, "No, nah, I'm a drinker. I'm not like I don't want to mm-hmm. smoke during this, or I'll be asleep back here." <laughs> and I, I do get, like getting tips with shame. joints or weed. People shame me for like, "Oh, you work for a reggae band and you don't smoke." It's like uh, it's not a requirement. <laughs> no, I work for a reggae rock band. I get to choose. <laughs> Whoa, that was awesome. <laughs> Best use of the air horn. What I've always wanted to do was to have like a camera set up on the merch table. And it wouldn't necessarily have been the, I'd blur out their faces, you know, I wouldn't have anything that would be, or I'd have them sign something, whatever. Russian dash cam. But like yeah, if, if, if there was a way to do, and I could say, hey, we're filming for the band, we're doing B-roll. All I would tell them is we're doing B-roll for, uh, hi. for have like a, well, I, the real. No, I'd rather just not even hide it. I'd rather just have it right on the table so it can pick up the audio and stuff. And the, I guess I would have a mic on the side or something. But either way, you know, I would make it so that uh, it was cool. And man, just the we could start our YouTube channel would get so many views. We need to start doing it. What I need to do is I need to give you my GoPro to take on tour with you guys. And you need to stick it there with, I'll give you a mic. And you just need to capture the footage and send it to me and I'll edit it. Police body cams that we just wear during all the show. Yeah. (laughs) That would be sick. People are like, why are you wearing that? It's like, in case someone tries to steal something. And like, have Pretty fake first. weapons. <laughs> merch, the merch diaries for tour. They come, they hear the song, and they leave. They don't think about the sound. They hear and the if, song, they come, and they leave. Yes, that's what I meant, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> but, but the idea with sound is if, you know, you're going to a show, you love this band, you hear them play, they do a great show, they sounded great, you go home, I did my fucking job. You know what I mean? It's only when things are bad that people are thinking about the sound guy, you know. Who did we go see in Dallas the night before where the sound guy was rocking out so hard to his own mix and it wasn't even good. It was like really pit high. Fucking black girl, dude. Or like the mid was like high or something. Something was off. It was hard. It was all mids. Yeah. It, my he ears really burned. Mid. Yeah, and the sound <laughs> like 
digging his fucking mix. It was terrible. We kept egging Zach on. We're like, dude, go up there and fix this yeah, right now. Yeah, go go push the guy out of the way and fix this show. It was like one of our favorite bands. Yeah, Robbie, do you ever get uh, do you ever get compliments after a set? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yep. I do. You're a great sound guy. I love your. Love your Thank work. you. I appreciate it. I love yeah, your work. I, I get compliments sometimes for sure. Um, especially with Pepper, I do a lot of the dubbing with Pepper, and people that like know dubbing is a thing, they they'll recognize or whatever. But I got so defensive recognize. when I saw Brett saying, "Hey, sound guy, turn up the bass." No, that's part of like, the, that's part of the show, bro. <laughs> I know. That's part of the show because then afterwards I fucking pummel them with it they feel it <laughs> they know i brought you that face you know, it's part of the show that was, that was brett's bit on the live from paradise tour wasn't it yeah yeah and it was funny because like uh, they flew me out halfway through that tour and um uh this the second night uh we did that and uh brett like really dug in he, he was like extra aggressive so i think it was like a little bit of a hazing thing f- for that part of the show I'm like, I knew they're like, oh, Brett does a thing where he's going to say, hey, turn the bass up. And then you like, you know, you turn the bass up. I'm like, all right, cool. But the second night, it's the second night I mixed these guys. And Brett was like very aggressive this time about it. And I was like, whoa, holy shit. Like, what did I do? I like, I thought I did a good job. I turned the bass up, right? I hit the cue or whatever, right? And then, uh, so I'm just think- <laughs> thinking about that. And we're packing up shit in the back and we're pushing it back to the bus. And then there's some fan by the gate where we're pushing. And he goes, hey, man. Come here. And I walk over to him and he goes, hey, dude, I saw you at the soundboard. Tough break. And I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Thank you. Great. Awesome guy. You're you're sick. Thank you for that. And then uh, it was fine. It was, it was a joke or whatever. And then I told Brett that story about the tough break and he liked, he lost it. He thought it was hilarious. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> funny. Like, thanks, dude. Well, because I thought the same thing. Like, I, I came and saw you guys at the House of Blues in Chicago mm-hmm. opening for Iration. Mm-hmm. And Brett did the same thing. And I was yeah. like, damn, he's just screaming at yeah. Robbie right now. No, and you're like, no, it's, no, no, no it's, part, it's part of the show. Cause like, uh, they always, they always start Stone Love the same way. So they like do like just that main riff a couple times. And I intentionally have it low uh, for that. And then when Brett always does, always does it, he goes, hey, where's the fucking bass? Blah, blah, blah. And then I hit him with it. So it's, it's part of the show. But uh, yeah, it was very yeah. aggressive. Yeah, just that that, and it was the second night, so like you know they're still like haven't got fully gotten to know them yet, and what the what the full vibe is, you know, you need two weeks to like really flesh out the vibe, or whatever. But um, no, it was just fun because he, he was especially aggressive. No guts, no glory, lights. <laughs> yeah, lights. Uh, yeah. What got you started with Pepper then? Where did that? Where did that? I, uh, that was come... Howie. Apparently, really? apparently, Ye hit up Howie and was like, "Hey, do you know any sound people that?" can cover for us the second half of live from paradise and he was like yeah hit up probably and i was like Tight. yes yeah i was like <laughs> okay i'm there and it's, it's fucking amazing i love working for pepper so much they're awesome dudes very generous very gracious <laughs> wouldn't that be um, funny he's like i hate it no, i hate no, it no they're great and uh <laughs> he starts right crying now. he's like they're so uh, mean to no, me no they're great they're a lot of fun um yeah i like it and i love all my crew members too Everyone I've worked with is super dope. Um, yeah, Kibby, Aaron, uh, and Corey, and uh, Sasha. And Aaron. Aaron was the uh, bass tech, right? Yeah, Aaron was the guitar tech for the summer tour. Five Finger Death Punch and someone else. But yeah, he had the big beard. And yeah, then, I was going to say, he was the metal dude, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was sick. Uh, A.A. Ron. We called him uh, uh, um, Ron, uh, We called him Lamb of Ron. And uh, <laughs> we would do like metal name puns off of his name or whatever. But, or whatever, but um, yeah, he was cool. And then for the for the step to the local motion tour, we had uh, uh, Timmy, who was Aaron's friend, and um, yeah, he was yeah, sick too. And 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 he works for Buckchair. Yeah, but you also had to watch Greg every night. <laughs> <laughs> I did have to put up with Greg every night. Yeah. Um, but no, Greg's <laughs> Greg's awesome. Cashed out was awesome. They're fucking pros on the road they're on off stage super quick um, oh they know their shit but yeah we make fun of them oh yeah yeah also. oh yeah i've done great we make fun of them so much but god damn it it's all out of love yeah, i yeah. love cat yeah I, yeah for sure. uh, i, I like when greg yelled at nick for writing cashed out sucks on their trailer <laughs> in like tiny <laughs> tiny sharpie <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't know that happened. That's hilarious. He's like, bro, that's our fucking livelihood. Like, got <laughs> real in his face. <laughs> I'm laughing like, like I heard the story. Dude, just... Nick also chalks it up to the fact he's like, I'm allowed to graffiti your trailer because the rap on your trailer is three years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing is it's true. Should have had gear stolen again because of the rap on your trailer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you should do something about that. Yeah. There was a, I was on the road somewhat with someone and we saw this band that was going and they had like a whole rap thing and it was like an American party metal band. So like right off the bat, it's like metal band. It was like skulls and like pentagrams and shit like that. And it was like party. It was like American party metal band. I was like, dude, you're just like Andrew WK. Yeah, it was some shit like that. You're asking asking for trouble. Going around like that. Asking for. I saw a wonderful video of uh, our good friend Joey Brohan mm. really, really blasting the pipes today on Instagram. <laughs> Remember when he was mooning us from the highway while he drove past? Several wow. times. Nice. That wow. actually a couple different days. <laughs> Which one is it? Yeah. Did you? Uh... Um, no, it was just on his story. He was, he was, uh, I don't know, they're doing something with him and Marshall are in a cover band. And I guess huh. they're playing a show tonight. Did you guys see the prank that Pepper did to Cashed Out on the last night of the tour we did? Was it the dildo mic? Yeah, the dildo mic, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I saw so that one. And I, was a, I was a big fan of when uh, they brought Greg out on stage and he's just like eating a sandwich. Yeah, as that, was a, that was the thing for most of the tours. So Greg, uh, one night he came out eating something and Brett like just totally fucking loved it. He fell in love <laughs> with the idea. And after that... <laughs> Brett was just like, yeah, every night you're bringing out some type of fucking food. And if you don't have any food, we will change your rider and we will make sure you have something to bring out on stage to eat every night. And uh, yeah, he loved it. It was awesome. Yeah, that's such great. a fun toy. I mean, another another piece of our good friend Joey here is his favorite cheap lunch to get is he would go and get the day old bread from Jimmy John's and then just eat it with mustard packets behind the merch table after their set. <laughs> He's like, it's great. I can get a full meal out of this for a dollar. <laughs> you you wow. keep doing you, buddy. You can. It'll keep you from dying, but not give you anything. It'll just give you yeah, some energy. A lot of sustenance. Yeah. But I, I can't be talking because all I ate was like gas station corn dogs too. Yeah. Pat, I literally saw you like eat a Panera bag at just like. <laughs> yeah, I saw the video. Yeah. It wasn't a pretty one, but yeah, I ate a baguette because it was like a dollar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, eating cheap is so crucial. I just can't keep up with those packed up guys trying to get like full meals from Whole Foods every day. Oh, you got to scam. You have to scan the system at Whole Foods. Yeah, sure. like every other day, you just like sit down like you paid for it and then leave. Yeah, I mean, that is some, that is something like, that could be done. That's something I've done about seven times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we hit a mimosa bar at at the Whole Foods one morning too, and then just dipped. No, I mean we had to like pay at the oh, bar. Yeah. But well, their bu- their cool buddy their buddy works at the bar too, right? That was in Dallas, actually. Was it Dallas? That was Dallas. That was the <laughs> night or the day after a show we played there. And then we had like a day off to drive somewhere. I am so high right now. Yeah. Like if people were <laughs> yeah. watching this, I was gonna say you've been. He's been and not looking. At, I'm. I'm like well, casually. Alex keeps my eating, so then I got the munchies. <laughs> so then I went and I hate raisin bagels, but I got one because I I looked in the fridge. All I had was like chicken and rice, and I'm like I can't be sitting here eating like a rice bowl right now, like in the middle of a podcast. So my only option was raisin bagel. So I got the raisin bagel. I've been sitting here. I've just been like swinging back and forth and like listening. But anyway, go ahead. Continue. (laughs) There was a, a, the first tour I ever did with Pacific Dub was Expendables Winter Blackout 2018. And we were doing, we were somewhere in Texas. And we had hit up a Whole Foods and I was like, oh, sick, Texas barbecue. So I like load up this to-go box full of Texas barbecue. 
and I left it in the van and Colton apparently went to go move it in the van and the whole bottom of it fell out and there was just barbecue all over the van. So he comes like running up to me. He's like, hey man, like I feel so bad. Like I've got your next dinner. Like you had those as leftovers and I just like fucking spilled it everywhere. And I later found out that it was just because the grease from all of the food had just torn away at the bottom of the box and like fell all over the place. Yeah. I'm like, I should be apologizing to you, not the other way around. Yeah, Colton's a sweetheart. But I yeah. will take that free meal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I took that free Colton's, meal. Colton's Col- super sweet until he gets high and then he just likes to sit around and berate me. <laughs> About that's weird. That's like an opposite reaction no, of Pat, what I get when I'm but high. Pat, that's that's the thing. That's that's oh, the thing. The total we have, you know? I love high Colton. Yeah, <laughs> great because yeah. it typically gets this into situations like <laughs> grilling brats in a mattress firm parking lot. At oh my a. god, dude! No, that was Bedford, okay, and yeah. it was a Sam's Club. Or dude, when we uh... night sausages <laughs> forever, dude. We That's why we need Alex here, so we can get way, the stories right. Th- three way, or if any of the packed up, dude. It would be all night wrong. Sa- night sausage tattoos, dude. Night sausage oh, tattoos. Shit. Should we do that for Halloween? Should we get night? Should we all just go as hot dogs? And we, we should all get sausages. tattoos that are like the moon, but as a sausage. You do to represent. Just. I like that. Just like a yeah. moon sausage. Yeah. I've got such a great hot dog spot right around the corner from my house, and it's... Oh, you're in it, Chicago, though. That's not fair. It's so good, and it really sucks that, like, my fridge is always empty, and I just find the excuse to go get hot dogs instead of, like, buying <laughs> groceries. Just go get some frozen veal. What's your favorite uh, kind of dog? I haven't had that since we were at my grandparents' house. Yeah, well, that was... A mixture of vodka, cocaine, and frozen veal. Did not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds good minus the veal. <laughs> yeah, what? Veal. Is great. <laughs> and we went and played with your friend's puppy. Oh, yeah. And now he's got another puppy. Yeah, they've got a lot of pit bulls, and they're super freaking cute. Aww. They got two pit bulls, and they're the best. Eddie and Boomer. I want them to meet mine. I want a pit bull so bad. Do you want fresh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I feel so bad. My dad said to me that he's like, he's like, don't do that. You don't make him feel bad. And I was like, Dad, first of all, fuck fresh. He has, like, he would but, <laughs> yeah, I I feed him. Um, but since fresh is adopted, he needs a lot of attention. And for some reason, he still, after like, I guess it's been about three years since we've had him, three or four years almost, he still like always has to like be the first one to everything and run and push Coda out of the way. And it just annoys the crap out of me because that's why Coda stopped coming in this room because Fresh would run in before him and just sent it all up. And so he just stopped coming in here. So I'm trying. So I put Coda's bowl in here so I can try and get him back into the room. And, uh, yeah, fuck Fresh. No, I'm just kidding. I love him. But, uh, <laughs> fresh, beca- fresh is a sweet guy. Every time someone comes over, they're like, I love Fresh. And Coda's going crazy. You know, they, but then as soon as they leave, it's the opposite. Coda's like real relaxed and like Fresh is crazy. Hey, sweet. you know that I give those boys equal love. Yes, you do. I yeah. love dogs. My parents don't. My dad, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a pretty known fact that my mom, likes i'm not gonna say she she doesn't like fresh but she likes coda better <laughs> and uh my dad i think has a soft spot for fresh because i'm always in here and busy and i'm trying to show them both equal and i actually try and show fresh that coda is like the boss of the house i'm trying to get fresh to like understand he needs to like respect coda's space but yeah i don't know i'm <laughs> i'm still high so doggies Coda oh, just needs to whoop Fresh's ass one day. Oh, yeah, that's what we were talking about. All it takes is one quick reminder. Yeah, yeah. but, you know, I'm trying to train him, and mm-hmm. I don't know. I think Fresh is always going to feel needy because he was so neglected. Like, when I first got him, he might he was probably, like, he's kind of fat now. 
which is I like fat. I think it's good when dogs are fat. Not fat, but, you know, healthy. But he was, like, so skinny. You could see all his bones and stuff. He was, like, missing, missing patches of fur. And I thought I was getting another Coda because he dressed him up and made him look all nice in the photo. And when I got there, he just looked so bad. But he came running in, dude, and he was, like, so happy. And, like, so I was like, yeah, dude, I'm taking you. Fuck it. Whatever. And even I even sat there and I was thinking, like, you know, I came in for something different. I even looked at some more dogs, but then I just kept going back to fresh because I knew in my heart no one was going to take him. Yeah. They were going to do the exact same thing I started to do. So I was like, all right, yeah, well, I mean, let's see how they go. Let's see if they get along first. So we took them outside. We were walking around, and they loved it. But I assume, you know, it takes longer than that. I probably should have, like, let it go. Because at first they were kind of territorial, and there were some issues. But after a year, it seemed like they kind of settled in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Without too much training. I think I crate trained them both, and still, even though they were, like, older and they were both. But fresh, I just feel bad because... Again, I thought he was blue brindle, but he was like a red, red nose, and he's small, and he's got these huge ears, which is like the best part of him, you know, is the awkward ears. Those blue brindles are just gorgeous. Yeah, I've never seen another one in person. I've seen like a darker version of it, but not that light, and it has like, like Kodakon has like a tiger type of design or something, you know? It's my my brother brought home, I think it was probably about two years ago. He brought home a stray cat that he had found and he was under the impression because it was so malnourished he thought he was bringing home like a four month old male kitten and we took it to the vet and it turns out it was a four year old just malnourished female cat that's now named Jerry Wow! <laughs> and it is the fattest cat ever now and walks around like she owns the fucking house my mom was not thrilled when it was brought home and now it's like those two are inseparable around the house it's pretty funny to see now alex is killing it right now who yeah you got, dude who you got creeping behind you is that you are you creeping behind cool? yourself alex what are you creeping behind yourself is that you in the picture alex look out there's someone behind you now there's a dog do you, are you not seeing what's behind you or are you switching it yeah that's, switching it. there's eddie <laughs> that's eddie who we were talking about Nice. Nice. You have the photo of him with the uh with the leprechaun hat? I don't. I don't have that in my camera roll. I've got it somewhere. I'm just not gonna take the time to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> Had to screenshot it. I'm gonna show that to Jimmy. Are you a Bears fan? Mm-hmm. They're oh, man, they're, they're re- Reese's thins. They're the thin ones. There's mm-hmm. fire. So I get those because I do the s'mores with the thin Reese's instead of chocolate. I do Reese's, marshmallow, ground <laughs> They're also a new sponsor. Damn. Josh, another, uh, I guess another s'more suggestion is instead of graham crackers, use Oreos. Oh, that that's good. That always comes up pretty hot. Mm-hmm. That now, sounds great. Use two of them or do you like take them apart and do it? Oh, no. Two. Come on. We're not stingy here. But Oreos are so small. Like, doesn't the stuff fall off? No. You could fit a marshmallow on top of an Oreo. Yeah, for sure. Maybe still throw a Reese's in there. I don't know. Mm. A Reese's thin. Well, I'm out of everything now, but I keep getting these like grape 10 milligram gummies, mm. and then I'll get a package of it's a package of 20 gummies, and they're all 5 milligram THC and 5 milligram CBD, and those ones mm. will kick your ass. Sounds, oh, really? Sounds tasty. I need at least like twenty milligrams to, and even say, then yeah. I'll just feel it. But like, yeah, but I'm be- such a, I'm such a lightweight when it comes to that <laughs> stuff that it's like I'll just pop the the five milligram with the CBD and then just sit down and play Tony Hawk for like three hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like for me to have like a serious edible event, I need to have like at least forty milligrams, fifty milligrams. I'm gonna get the new PS5. I think. Oh, I'm definitely fucking getting it for Jeez. sure. I mean, maybe not. The, this year, maybe sometime next year. Send me your gamer tag. Okay. I'm getting the new Alex, f- is that the photo you took from the train? That's pretty dope. Maybe. <laughs> Chicago. The one time Alex comes to Chicago and doesn't have to work, he had the most <laughs> enjoyable time just because he kept recognizing different scenes from Batman. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. And Ferris Bueller. And Ferris Bueller. I didn't know Ferris Bueller was in Chicago. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I haven't seen it in years. Oh, and then we went to the uh, uh, the Wayne's World Bar. <laughs> Wayne's World yeah. Party on. We played hockey on the back patio. <laughs> and and when people walked out or like walked in the way, they were like, car, <laughs> game on. <laughs> Everybody played into it. It was so amazing. And it was a dog bar. And it was a dog nice. bar. It was a great day. <laughs> Very cool. More dog bars for sure. That's <laughs> yes, like my ultimate is to open up a dog bar slash venue. Not too big, but a decent fi- size enough to make money off. You know, and Dude, that's on our bands, fucking you know? rider. It's like, please bring your dogs to work. Mm. If it is allowed, we encourage your dogs to come to work with you. That's awesome. The guy at the Norva always has the the chef at the Norva always has the pit bulls running around. Yeah, yeah. chef Dave from Baltimore. He's, he's like, awesome. He, he always has his husky on stage. Right? I love the Norva. Norva. <laughs> That's one of my favorite venues. They put it all on Roma. Boys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to cut this short. That's cool. I really don't want to take you into the toilet with me, but I got to oh, poop. Nah, that's, okay. that's all good. <laughs> Great. Now I got to edit that out. <laughs> no. Actually, no. If, I'm just, I'm just going you to make your face really... In. Well, I'm going to key in on you the, when you say yeah, it. The world cannot and, uh, know that Alex poops. Yeah. No one can know. I don't poop. Alex yeah. does, does poop. poop. I've, I've shared <laughs> so many hotels with him. He does not poop. Uh, yeah, I, same here. I, Never seen him poop. I shed. (laughs) (laughs) I don't poop. I shed. (laughs) I farted and I shed. (laughs) Shed pants. (laughs) I shitted. I shitted it everywhere. I shitted it. All right. Well, that was fun. This is probably my favorite podcast. We need to kind of let's see if we can try and like get together like once a month or something. Yeah. If you guys are free. Yeah. And do one of these. I, I love seeing y'all. I love seeing good y'all. times. Yeah, this one a lot smoother than I thought it was, as far as the technology <laughs> and stuff, and everyone looks great. You know, Alex, yeah. It's just being able to make poop jokes on like a daily basis, like all day long, and having it be like somewhat acceptable. Yeah, it's very acceptable. It's actually encouraged. Yeah. I mean, not with the people I work with. Not that it, I got. Uh, Yo, fuck them fake ass motherfuckers. No, I mean I love them all. I love my coworkers, but I did get a <laughs> passive aggressive message from someone because of my my profile picture on like our messaging app for like in the company is a picture of a uh, skeleton playing a saxophone. Oh yeah, yeah, you showed yeah, me. That's that. awesome. So though. I have my status as uh it just it's like asterisk spooky saxophone noises <laughs> this is what i use to like contact managers and stuff and someone was like you should probably change that at some point no i think <laughs> i think it's very important that you express some individuality and i encourage all of your other co-workers to have a goofy photo oh yeah. one of my one time. of my other co-workers he has a <laughs> He sets his status as an emoji. Actually, Alex, you could go sit on the toilet and just mute yourself because you have the background. So you're not. No one's gonna see anything but you anyway. Just mute it. He's already shitting. Oh, he I know. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Pat. Let's let's cut this short. I need to wipe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, nice. there you go. Alex. <laughs> on that note, we're good. <laughs> it was good seeing you all. This was fun. I missed this all was of fun. Yes. This was a lot of fun. I looked forward to it. I'm having Paul on tomorrow. It's Paul Haley from Bad Fish, the Bad Fish TM is coming on. Oh tomorrow. shit! Oh, Paul. I said, what's up? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, so me and him, I'm a love. Uh, I know his. Uh, I guess it's his cousin. Either his cousin or something. Sean. Uh, we were fraternity brothers back in the day. It was weird. Fucking Sean, dude. Fucking Sean. He's like this. <laughs> Yo, but he's funny, so we'll we'll talk about funny stories about him. But yeah, I love Paul too. They're all from like a really good family. Paul's great. He's he's uh, his little bar seems to be doing quite well during all. Of yes, this. I feel like he's doing three of them. He, he's doing three. He's like helping out with three different places. I think right now. Holy shit! Does he does he own one of them, or Maybe. does he just do like production and like promotion for? He one? might like you know. Be the entertainment person. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask him tomorrow, and then I'll get back to you. All right, boys, I love you, but All I right. gotta go. All right, yeah, uh, you can go. Peace.
<laughs> no one was stopping you from hanging up, Alex. <laughs> we tried to cut it short, but Cat Pat kept talking. <laughs> All right, yeah. see you, man.